Uh, now we're going to talk about offices without borders and how to attract the remote talent. Millions of people all over the world are on the move for work. Now that we're not tied to one city or to one building, you can hot desk in a, in a hot climate, right? But where should you go when you can go anywhere? And how can employers and governments appeal to the world's new telecommuting tourists? This is really important, I think, to everyone, because, for example, in Miami, we've had a lot of people come in to Miami from the northeast of the United States. So let's find out here to discuss in conversation with Jared Lindzen, freelance journalist. Please welcome Persono CEO Hanno Renner and Portugal Secretary of State of Tourism, Rita Marx. Good morning, everyone. Thank you very much for being here, and uh, to you too as well. Uh, I just want to jump right in uh, and, and ask about the implications of remote work uh, for, for governments, for tourism, for technology companies. Uh, we've got a lot of things to discuss today, but I wanted to just sort of get your initial thoughts on how the last year and a half, two years has changed everything uh, in, your, in your various lines of work. And uh, Hanna, you can start if you'd like. Yeah, happy to start. Welcome, everyone. Um, I think for us, there's two lenses to look at it. One, we're a provider of HR software, um, and therefore, a lot of our customers that manage their employee and their workforce with our software, of course, had faced many challenges with all of a sudden requiring people that, that they don't meet physically to sign contracts to uh, apply for where they work, uh, putting into regulations. Can people now work remotely? have to come to, uh, to come to the office and all of these regulations of course the one angle of how we're looking at it and how we're trying to support our customers with uh, with our technology and then on the flip side we're a company ourselves with uh, a thousand people spread all across Europe but now more and more also uh, not just in our five offices but also working from home working from the vacation places and um, yeah those were challenges which I'm looking forward to be discussing over the next 20 minutes Absolutely. And, and uh, Rita, uh, tell me how, how your world has changed in the last uh, year and a half from a professional standpoint. We don't have to get into the personal stuff. Well, <laughs> the world has changed so much. It's amazing. Well, first of all, thanks for having me. Hello, everyone. Uh, my great pleasure to have you here in Lisbon after 20 difficult months. Well, going back to the question, yeah, the world has changed. I think, you know, before the pandemic, we really wanted to uh, work hard or, uh, you know, work hard, play hard. And now we want to work better and, and play better. So um, this gives us a huge opportunity for us to make smart decisions, try to balance professional and personal life. So I'm, I'm very optimistic about the future. I think we'll be happier uh, onwards uh, from this, you know, from this pandemic gave us the chance to, for us to, to be happier and, and to, be, to have better jobs, to, uh, to make the right alliances with the right software companies. So I think we are the right track to, to make the world better. And as the state secretary for, for tourism, um, how has the, the, your mandate changed as a result of remote work, because previously you were attracting vacationers, people coming for a temporary holiday. Um, has, has your mandate in that role completely shifted now? Honestly, um, it was not the case. You oh, know, it wasn't? You no, know, because you know, we have been claiming that Portugal is a nice place to visit. I know that's your first time in Lisbon, so you had got an upgrade in our CV, so that's good. But Portugal is not only a nice place to visit, it's a nice place to, uh, to uh, live. Uh, we do have a huge, huge market of second home um, uh, residents, um, so it's a nice place to invest in as well. And so we have been working hard to make tourism not a seasonal activity, so we are trying to foster tourism uh, all year round, across all country, and that has been our mission for a couple of years now. So uh, really the pandemic gave us the chance to show that Portugal is really the nice place to be. Um, so, as I was saying, we are very optimistic about the future. So, honestly, our mission has not sh changed so much, um, but it gives us, you know, a boost to, uh, to be focused on the right track. So, you've always been focused on attracting not just visitors, oh, yeah. but people to live full-time. Yeah. Has this shift to remote work 
change the way in which you approach that? Is it now no longer have a second home in Portugal, but you know, keep your job elsewhere in the world, but live here full time or part time? You know, one of the challenges that we face today is, is there's a lack of workforce, right? It's really hard for, for every sector to recruit. And so people are asking not a better salary, maybe a better salary as well, but still they are asking, you know, better conditions. And again, you know, pandemic gave us this opportunity to balance personal and professional life. And so people basically are asking, you know, to a better spot to work from and uh, quality of life, uh, security, affordable locations as well. And, and Portugal, as I was saying, you know, has been a, a good second home option for a couple of Brits, for a couple of Americans, for a couple of you know, non-American people, non-Europeans. And now with the pandemic, you know, we rank high, for instance, in digital nomads locations. Portugal is number one, Lisbon is number one, Porto up in the north, number two, Edis Saida, we have Madeira. Um, because, you know, honestly, I had br breakfast this morning and I paid 65 cents for a coffee. 65 cents for a coffee, you know, so, and if you compare, for instance, a flat here, when you compare the one that you would pay, like in London, it would be half. And on top of that, you know, you have, you know, huge, huge affordable way, um, you know, of living, but also a huge quality of life. So we'll be fine, I'm pretty sure. So this is a great opportunity for all of us, uh, Portugal as a nation, but also for you, for us as employees of this world. Absolutely. And, and Hanno, how do you approach managing the infrastructure behind all of these moving parts where workers are, are choosing where they want to live and taking their jobs with them? Uh, you know, part of your mandate is, is to manage the infrastructure behind that. What are some of the new challenges that you're dealing with uh, since the pandemic? So I think, I mean, essentially it comes down to the companies and their decisions of how they want to live because the, the current, the world has shifted, but it has given primarily more choice, more opportunities, how you want to manage your workforce from where they work. And for us, that has um, provided challenge and the opportunity to support that flexibility. So uh, providing the opportunity to show, for example, where people can work, uh, work from if you have a certain guidance of, like we have ourselves, how many days or weeks people can work remote, how many can uh, be in the office, how many uh, from home, being able to track that and be able to request these and also understand how the others change and how do we maybe in certain times want people to get together in person somewhere, uh, whether it's in the office or somewhere else, and uh, when are we more flexible, so tracking that, but also just the general day-to-day -day interactions that used to be in many companies still before the pandemic in a more analog way, like signing a contract, like um, having someone that, that has new information um, of, of their home because they've moved the new bank account, all of these information you need to manage about your employee. Those were really hard to gather when you're in a, at a distance. So really you need that seamless interface where people can directly interact. And the next step we've recently have taken that is looking at all the digitization that has happened inside companies and all the, the companies that are here helping with that uh, is the, the amount of tools that have been implemented in inside organizations needed to be connected. So we've launched something called people workflow automation that helps span, uh, automate these processes that actually span across the entire organization and involve multiple tools. Like if I'm signing in sick, my Slack status turns off, my calendar invites get automatically declined and a lot of these automations is things which we have built in response to the pandemic. Mm -hmm. And in the current environment, I think it's important to also acknowledge that we're in the middle of, of a labor shortage and organizations need to be innovative uh, and, and creative in order to attract and retain talent right now. Um, how are you helping your customers and, and you as a company yourselves uh, to, to manage that challenge uh, through you know, remote work, enab enabling remote work? Yeah, so I think, again, what, what most people from what we're hearing, but also talking to our customers, request is is not i want to be forced into remote work or forced into something they want oftentimes they want choice mm -hmm. so what a lot of companies in our customer base are doing and what we're doing internally as well is providing employees the ability to to choose to come to the office certain days away to connect with their coworkers, but also to work from home when they when they wish to or to uh, spend their time in portugal or other places where they can maybe extend their vacation or just go deliberately for for three weeks and work from a different place i think that flexibility is something which we've been seeing request demanded internally which we want to support for our employees uh, or now doing uh, ourselves with a 
initiative called Personio Flex, but also something uh, which we, of course, need to support uh, our customers with. Because as you say, uh, every organization, especially in the current uh, post-pandemic hiring spree, needs talent and needs to attract that talent. And uh, we're seeing that companies that are not giving that kind of flexibility, certainly having, having trouble to re retain the existing talent and uh, bring in new folks. And, and speaking of winners and losers of this transition, um, Rita, if we were to walk through the, uh, the, the conference here, you would see uh, a lot of displays from different countries all over the world trying to attract people to come and live and work in their countries. Um, Portugal is doing a phenomenal job of, of attracting that talent. Um, what's your secret? What advice would you, is it just be in a warm climate or what advice do you have for, for all the booths out there that are trying to bring people into their countries to, to work? Well, we do have a secret sauce. I'm not going to tell you, that's for sure. But <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, but I know, I think it's, um, it's a subset of, of parameters that they make us, us quite strong in uh, attracting, uh, you know, new and good talent. I would say that we are very much an you know, affordable uh, country, as I said before. Uh, we do have a, a high, um, high quality of life ratio, I would say, you know, so we are very uh, strong. You mentioned the weather, uh, but also the security. We are a safe country. And, um, and of course, we do have, you know, the uh, right community. So there is a huge community that's growing, that's, you know, popping up. And, um, and people, you know, when you are, um, you know, when you look for a spot to stay from work for, to, to work from, you look some peers, you look to, you try to find, you know, you know some peers that relate with you. And we, ha we have that already. So there is a kind of, we are scaling up. So we are not really a startup, you know, <laughs> we are scaling up. And this is good because, you know, it's fine to, to find someone that has the same challenges that you face. Um, so I guess that, you know, we are in this process of growing up. Um, of course, there is a limit, uh, we know that, but you know, it doesn't matter because you know, the world, and it's good to have all these competitors out here because the year has 12 months all around, so you know, they can stay here for six and again go to other destination. I think you know, the world now is flat, so no borders, and that's the happy parts of our life as well. Absolutely, and, and I also have to ask, since we're here at Web Summit, um, I personally had not been to Portugal prior to Web Summit. I've now been five times, and I, I know a lot more about Portugal than I ever would have without this conference. Um, do you think Web Summit is having a direct impact on yeah. the tech industry's interest in moving here? Absolutely. You know, this is uh, you know the major event for startups, for scale-ups, for investors. You know for the digital, uh, digital communities, digital villages. So, you know, yeah, uh, it gave us a good, good, a stronger brand. So very excited to, to keep up this good relationship with you all, all of you. Uh, it has been amazing. Um, you know, this is a never ending story, a never ending passion story. So great. Absolutely. Um, and, you know, Portugal on the, on the global scale in terms of population is sort of a medium, small to medium sized country in, in the European context. And that is my terrible transition to talking about small, medium sized businesses. Um, <laughs> Hanno, in this global war for talent, it seems like small and medium businesses are, are at a disadvantage compared to large organizations that have a lot more resources, have the ability to deploy a workforce around the world much more seamlessly. Um, and, and can't really put as much resources into making this transition. Do you think that they are going to struggle and suffer um, when their larger competitors are able to offer more infrastructure to enable remote work? I think there's pros and cons to being a large organization and to being a small and mid-sized organization. I think the, the challenge we are seeing and we personally facing that and we're seeing it from a lot of our customers is that if you're a smaller company that traditionally doesn't have as many offices in different countries, it's also not as easy to just allow your employees to just work from anywhere. There are services that can support that, but essentially there's a lot of tax regulations, a lot of legal regulations. If I don't have a permanent establishment here in Lisbon, even though we're a European country, uh, company with five different offices across the continent, we are not allowed to permanently send people here uh, because there, there would be tax fraud and so we need to find these ways to enable them. There's a shorter period of times where that's possible, but even that requires uh, administrative overhead. So these are things where larger companies might be as an advantage because they just generally ha already have a more distributed workforce through their offices and then can allow the re remainder to also um, you know, offer more flexible and remote work. 
But that being said, what we do see with ourselves and a lot of our customers, which are all small and mid-sized companies between 10 and 2,000 employees, they are much more agile to uh, adapting to the new way. Mm. I've been speaking to, to folks over the past uh, days that work at, at Salesforce and a lot of the large organizations, which are still completely in lockdown globally. They, they've, all the offices are shut because it's just much more complex to manage if you're 70,000 people around the world, whether you open office here or not, and you, you probably just easier to shut everything down and give less flexibility. While a lot of small organizations are much more agile to adapting to how are the, now the, the regulations changing with, with COVID, how uh, are, are the demands, uh, what is our customers, uh, our employees actually want, and they were very quickly understanding these demands, adapting to them, and thereby actually are, in my opinion, an advantage towards the large players. They have a much harder time to adapt to this new way of, of working and to the, the their, yeah, compared to their traditional setup. And, and Rita, Hanno was talking a lot about regulation and, and how to make it easier for companies to, to operate on a global scale. Um, from a government perspective, how do you craft policies that make it easier for companies to uh, choose Portugal as their destination and, and for individual remote workers to choose Portugal as their destination? Yeah, we, we did, but I have to tell you that it's never enough. You know, it's never enough. This is a work in progress um, issue. So, uh, you know, because, you know, uh, the world is very competitive, so we need to be, you know, a policy, public policy has to be, you know, continuously evolving in order mm. to meet employees' needs and also employers' needs. But, you know, I mentioned before the importance of, you know, native digital, um, native villages, and we should also work on the concept of employers' villages, especially for SMEs. So in order to bridge them, you know, bring them together because the experience that they can share as employers, employers is, should be really net nurtured and, you know, um, should be really um, um, incentive, incentivized um, because as I said, you said before, you know, they, are, they have small teams, they, don't, might, they might not have the means to embrace the world and to figure out what's the best location, best, the best spot to hire, to hire talent and all that. So this concept of villages, I think it makes sense not only for the, the digital workers, but also for the company, especially for the SMEs. Going back to the question, yes, we have been working on fiscal policy, you know, trying to reduce red tape as much as possible uh, to make the world flat. And, um, but again, it's a never ending process. So we need to, you know, continuously push for it and trying to, to overcome all these barriers that show up in the, in the middle of the, the way. And maybe just building on that point with, with one additional point. I think the, the key point for us here is that it's not about competition between countries. As you said, it should be a flat world yeah. and especially a flat Europe. And I think the opportunity on a, on a European level to make these regulations easier to allow both the, the travel and then global workforce. We've recently had a, a summit in Paris um, talking about that. And I think the, a European visa, but also European employment contract where mm -hmm. we can move people around more freely. And it doesn't matter whether they're employed in a company based in Munich or in Lisbon, but they can move around the different yeah. European member states, I think would be a huge opportunity for us to facilitate the future of work. Sounds like a great idea. We'll have to bring it to Brussels and uh, see what they say. But uh, that's all the time we have. Thank you both so much for being here. Thank you all for coming out. Thank you. Thank you.